Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 1 games on your PC. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing you need to do is come to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be for the free emulator we're using in today's video called RetroArch. All we need to do is come here, come to the download section, and we're going to be downloading the latest stable build. I'd recommend downloading whatever the latest version is when you're actually watching this video. For me at the moment, it's 1.9.0. Or if you have a specific operating system, feel free to come down a little bit further and download whichever one best suits you. Once your RetroArch is downloaded and installed, you should be met at this main menu right here. All we're going to be doing is coming to the main menu. We're going to be clicking on the load core option here at the very top and here you'll see a list of all currently downloaded and installed cores in our RetroArch. What we're going to be doing is coming down here a little bit further to the download a core section. We're going to be selecting this and here you'll see a list of all currently available cores that we can download for RetroArch. What we're going to be doing here is scrolling down until we see Sony and PlayStation and here you'll get a couple of different options for Sony PlayStation cores that we can use. There's BLPSX HW, BLPSX, DuckStation and PCSX Rearmed. So here I'd recommend potentially experimenting with these different cores depending on what you're trying to do depending on the application and software you're using as one might perform better than the other in certain tasks and vice versa. For today's video I'm going to be using the PCSX rearmed core. To download and install the core in RetroArch what we do is simply left click with our mouse or click A on our controller. Some text will appear at the bottom left to say downloading and installing your core and you'll know your core is downloaded and installed once you see the blue hashtag here on the right hand side of our core. From this point what we can do is simply back out of here by clicking B on our controller or right clicking on our mouse and our core has now been downloaded and installed inside RetroArch. Now sadly for the play PlayStation 1 core, you are actually going to need a little bit more information. You can't just play PS1 games with the core. Well, at least not exactly. What I'm also going to be doing is leaving a link down below to this link, and this is going to be for the RetroArch documentation, or more specifically, the PCSX rearmed core documentation for RetroArch. And if we come down here to the BIOS section, we will see that a BIOS file is required inside RetroArch to play PS1 games fully, or in this case specifically to get a higher level of compatibility. So it is technically possible with the rearmed core to play games without a BIOS file. However, it is recommended to have a BIOS file and depending on the games you want to play and depending on the version there's a couple of different BIOS files that you can use. Most people will be most familiar with the 1001.bin BIOS file however any of these will work depending on the game and depending on the software you're using. Now I will mention in today's video I'm not going to be showing you where to download BIOS files although they are really easy to download a quick google search will help you out or you can just dump the BIOS from your original PS1. This can also be an adequate solution again a quick google search will help you out here. Once you have your BIOS file downloaded and available I currently have mine here we're going to be able to bring this directly over to RetroArch and get it installed right away. So we don't actually do this in the UI of RetroArch. I'm actually going to be closing this down. I'm going to be coming up to your Windows Start button and we're going to be searching for RetroArch. Rather than clicking on the application, we're actually going to be searching for and selecting the RetroArch data folder. If we click this open, here we will see all of the assets and files that are linked and needed for our RetroArch. Once this is open, what we're going to be doing is searching for the system folder right here. And here we can put in and install any BIOS files we need for cores that we want to be using in RetroArch. For today's video, what I'm going to be doing is simply dragging and dropping my sch1001.bin file in here and it will be successfully installed and added to RetroArch. Now I will reiterate this file does need to be in this exact format. It cannot be contained inside a zip. It does need to be in the correct .bin format with the correct naming structure as shown as before. Once your core is installed here, what we can do is come back to RetroArch. What we're going to be doing is coming to the main menu. We're going to be clicking on load core and we're going to be selecting the core that we just downloaded, which is the Sony PlayStation Core PCSX Rearmed. I'm going to be clicking to select this and now our core will be loaded inside RetroArch. RetroArch. We'll know our core is fully loaded if we look down here in the bottom left and we see the version number of our RetroArch along with the core name, which means our core is ready to go. And now from this point, we're ready to talk about games. And I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download any games for a PS1, although it is really easy to find a quick Google search will help you out. And you, or you can feel free to dump and create a digital version of any of the games you already have. Again, a quick Google search will help you out with this. But if you do download your games, your games will most likely come in a .7 zip or a .rar format. So right here, I have Tekken 3 and it is in a .7 zip file. Now, sadly, we can't play games directly from a .7 zip or a .rar inside RetroArch, so you will need to extract your games out either using 7 zip or WinRar. I'll be leaving links to both of these in the description down below. For today's video, I'm going to be using 7 zip, although the process is very similar for WinRar. All we need to do is select our game. We need to right click, hover over 7 zip, and what I'm going to be doing is clicking here, extract files. We will get this pop up. We simply need to click OK, and then our game will start to extract. Now, depending on the size of the game and the computer you're using, this can take a couple seconds to a couple 
couple of minutes. So you'll need to be a little bit patient here. Once your file is extracted, if we double click into this folder, we will see we'll get a couple of different files here. We will get .bin and .q files. And that's exactly what we need for PS1 games inside RetroArch. Once your games are downloaded and extracted, we're going to be able to come back to RetroArch. We're going to be coming to the main menu. We're going to be clicking on the load content option right here. And from this point, what you're going to have to do is locate to where your games are downloaded and extracted. So for me, my game is right here. And for today's video, what you're going to have to do is find a .q file. We're going to be selecting it. And here again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, you're going to have to select the PCSX core again. However, since it's our current core, it will be on the top of the list and show up here. So what I'm going to be doing is selecting this core and then our game will start to load up and play just like that. Now, from this point, you can feel free to resize this window. Thankfully, RetroArch will keep the original aspect ratio, so you don't have to worry about anything getting distorted. Now, while playing your games, if you would like to open up any menu or change any settings, we can come up to the top left of RetroArch, click on the command option, and here we have a couple of different things we can do already. We have audio options, disk options, and save state options. However, if you'd like to open up a full RetroArch menu, what you can do is click on the menu toggle option right here. And here we'll see a list of a bunch of other settings that you can play around with. If we come down a little bit further here to the options tab, if we select this open, we'll get a bunch of different settings that we can experiment that are all core specific. So feel free to come in here and play around with anything if you want to experiment or if you want to change any settings. To go back out of the menu, we come all the way back out to the quick menu here, click on the quick menu, click resume, and then your game will start to play again. Now, as mentioned, depending on the game you're playing, you may want to experiment with different cores to get different performance. And this can vary between game and software and the actual application that you're trying to use. Now, also, most people should have no problem playing PS1 games on their computer. It doesn't require a very powerful system, but performance can be affected if you have a really old system or if you have something that's relatively underpowered. Now, the last thing I'd recommend doing is connecting up an external controller. It can help make your gaming experience a lot better. I'm not going to be showing you in today's video how to connect up an external controller, but it is really easy to do in RetroArch and I'll be leaving a link in the description down below to a previous video where I show you how to set up and map a controller inside RetroArch. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play PlayStation 1 games on your PC. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time as always, keep it saucy. Peace.